The premise of the movie is set far in the future. When the Earth has become uninhabitable, humans have to find another planet to settle on, that is when the organization called, the United Ranger Corps is founded. The United Ranger Corps is a global military effort in the evacuation of Earth. The Rangers lead the settlement of mankind's new home called Nova Prime. The exodus ends when humanity settles on a new pristine planet they call Nova Prime. The only problem is that the planet already has beings living on it. The natives of Nova Prime release monstrous creatures called the Ursas, to get rid of the human settlers. The Ursas are technically blind, but they can detect humans by sensing the pheromones, that the human brain releases when they are scared. The creatures can literally smell fear in humans, and attack. Because of them humankind is again in danger of extinction. One thousand years later, the rangers who had helped humans to evacuate the Earth, find a way to defeat the Ursus. The Prime Commander, Cypher Rage, creates a technique called ghosting, where he can fearlessly battle with the Ursus, making himself practically invisible to them. Using this technique the rangers defeat the Ursus and live on Nova Prime peacefully. The scene cuts to some teenagers training to become rangers in the human settlement of Nova Prime. One of the ambitious teens is Commander Cypher's son, Katai. Katai's elder sister, Senshi, was killed while trying to save him from Inursa, so he trains hard every day to become a ranger and fight back. On the evaluation day, the evaluator commander tells Katai that his test scores are impressive, but his field activity is average. Hence he is not selected as a ranger. Katai retaliates, but commander dismisses the conversation. In the following scene we see the prime commander Cypher, finally arrive home after his expedition to another planet. He meets his wife, Faya, and greets her. At night the family is having dinner, when Cypher asks Katai about his training, Katai replies that he hasn't been selected and Cypher simply asks him to try harder. Katai rudely gets up from the table, making Cypher yell at him to sit back down. After dinner, Cypher tells Faya that he is leaving for his last voyage to Aphidos, to train some rangers. He plans to retire after the trip. Faya asks him to take Katai with him so he could learn how to be a ranger. She vaguely reveals that Katai blames himself for his elder sister Senshi's death. The following day Cypher and Katai prepare to leave for the expedition. Before they leave, Cypher is approached by a ranger who has lost one of his legs in battle. The ranger thanks Cypher for saving his life and gets on his foot to salute him. Katai watches the commotion and fascination, admiring how the other rangers respect his father. The rangers are also lifting a captured Ursa in their ship to use in training. Everyone boards the spaceship and it finally takes off. Halfway through their trip, Cypher asks Katai to strap in and take a rest like the others. But because of the uncomfortable seat he doesn't fall asleep, so he goes to a restricted area where the Ursa is kept. He is then stopped by a ranger who makes fun of him for being intrusive. A group of rangers allow him to go near the restrained Ursa to see if he is fearless like his father. But the Ursa smells Katai's fear and growls. Just then Cypher wakes up and checks the gravitational force in the ship using a technology fitted in his ring. He notices something is off and orders the rangers to secure all cargo. Katai goes back to his seat and straps himself in. Cypher then asks the pilot about the nearest asteroid shower, at first the pilots do not detect one, but as time passes by they notice a heavy asteroid shower coming their way. It hits the ship making it shake aggressively and causing some serious damage. The rangers start to panic and the only one strapped in is Katai. He hyperventilates scared of what is about to happen. Cypher orders the pilots to travel to the wormhole and they finally reach outside the asteroid shower. However the ship is heavily damaged and cannot go on for a long time, so they will have to land on the nearest planet suitable for humans. While searching for such a planet the pilot comes across the Earth. Cypher is skeptical about landing on their old home because the Earth has become a class 1 quarantine planet after the human's departure. But has no other way out. As the ship falls on the Earth's surface at an uncomfortable speed, Cypher approaches his son and calms him down. Katai gets visions of the time they were attacked by an Ursa and his sister Senshi was killed. Just then the ship starts to break causing everyone around Katai to fall off of it. At last Katai falls unconscious and crash lands on the surface of the earth. Humans have returned to the earth, after a thousand years. After a while he wakes up and looks around to find the dead bodies of fellow rangers. He also sees his father lying limp on the ground and hugs him. To Katai's surprise Cypher regains consciousness and greets him. But both of his legs are severely injured making it impossible for him to stand up. Cypher asks him how many people survived, only to find out that everyone except for them is dead. Moreover the rear part of the ship is absent, meaning that the captured Ursa has landed somewhere else. Cypher believes that the creature might be dead from impact, but still asks Katai to be careful. 
Cypher makes Katai get an emergency beacon that can be used to send signals to a rescue group in Nova Prime, but they are disappointed to see that the beacon is fully damaged. Then Katai takes Cypher to the control panel, which is still working. From there Cypher finds out the location of the second beacon that is in the tail section of the ship. A hologram shows that the second beacon has landed 100 kilometers away from their current location. Without the beacon they will never be able to get back home, so they will have to retrieve. It but since Cypher is not in a condition to walk Katai will have to do it himself. Cypher warns him about the creatures of the earth who have evolved to kill humans in the past thousand years. The journey will not be easy for Katai but Cypher will be watching him in his trails from the control panel at all times. Cypher gives Katai his weapon, a wrist communicator and six capsules of a fluid that enhances the oxygen intake, so he can breathe in Earth's low oxygen atmosphere. He asks Katai to take the capsules in regular intervals and sets him off on his journey. Beginning his journey Katai climbs a sloppy hill and reaches the top, there he is fascinated to see several lives on the Earth. The Earth now has violent thermal shifts because of which the nights are too cold to handle. Hence Cypher advises Katai to reach the hot spots caused by the geothermal energy every night, to keep himself warm. After that Cypher checks the condition of his legs and sees that they are still damaged. He takes a painkiller for the moment which makes him go hazy. Jaden's out in the woods getting stalked by advanced human killers and Will's just getting high on a spaceship. By midday Katai reaches a forest when Cypher notices a creature approaching him. On the monitor he informs Katai of the creature and asks him to stay put. The animal turns out to be an evolved violent monkey, so a human Katai gets scared and throws a rock at the animal, attracting a whole group of monkeys who chase him. A worried Cypher gives him the directions, as Katai runs for his life. The monkeys leave him after he jumps into a river. Katai finally stops running and finds a poisonous leech stuck to him. He hurriedly removes the parasite but the creature has already left its venom in his body. Katai starts to lose his vision and his body stops moving. Cypher orders him to get an antidote from his medical kit, Katai injects the dose and falls unconscious soon after. After a while Cypher wakes Katai up saying that the temperature is dropping rapidly as night approaches. He will have to get to a hot spot quickly, if he doesn't want to freeze to death. Katai wakes up completely healed from the leech's poison and makes his way forward. Meanwhile Cypher performs a makeshift surgery on his legs to make them better, but he knows that he doesn't have much time left. At that moment he reminisces about the time he wished his daughter a happy birthday before her death. A while later Katai finally arrives at the first hot spot. He checks his equipment for the day and sees that two capsules of liquid that enhance his oxygen level are destroyed, this means that he will have to reach his destination sooner. Knowing that Cypher will ask him to return if he finds out about the broken vials. Katai lies saying everything is intact. Katai has yet to make a good decision in this movie. At night Katai asks Cypher how he discovered the ghosting technique. For the first time Cypher tells him that he was going on a run. When an Ursa appeared right in front of him. A scared Cypher froze and the Ursa shot its pincer right through Cypher's shoulder. Making the both of them fall into a river off the cliff. At the bottom of the river the Ursa remained on top of Cypher trying to drown him. At that moment Cypher accepted his death and wasn't scared anymore. Because of this the Ursa couldn't see him and he was able to kill it. So it took humankind a thousand years just to realize that the trick is to not be scared. Katai falls asleep listening to the story. The following day he continues his journey, halfway through the day Cypher starts to notice hints of the presence of Ursa in the area. Katai reaches a tall waterfall which he will have to cross to reach the destination. Cypher asks him to check his supplies, and is disappointed to see that he has only two vials of liquid oxygen left. An embarrassed Katai says he can make it to the tail with just two. But Cypher asks him to abort the mission, right then Katai gets a flashback of the day Senshi died. An Ursa had attacked their home and like always, Cypher was on a mission somewhere else. To save her brother's life, Senshi had kept him inside a glass sphere from where the Ursa couldn't smell his fear. That day Katai witnessed his sister getting killed in front of him and to this date he blames himself for it. Back in the present Katai argues with Cypher claiming that he is not a coward. Cypher tries to calm him down but in the moment of rage Katai jumps off the cliff. He uses his suit to guide the direction of his fall. Just when he thinks that he can make it to the bottom, a large bird attacks him and breaks his communicator. Now Cypher has no way to contact Katai. A while later Katai wakes up in the bird's nest, surrounded by its chicks. Before he can get out, all of them are attacked by a group of panthers. The mother bird fights the one on the top of the nest, while Katai fights a panther inside of it. By the end of the fight all of the bird's chicks are dead. As it tries to revive them in frustration, treating Katai to fresh trauma, Kita runs away from the place. 
Meanwhile Cypher tries to look for Katai through his satellite monitors but instead finds two rangers impaled to a tree. The system detects the presence of an Ursa in the area. Oblivious of this, Katai takes rest in a cave for the night, without his father navigating the way. He has to rely on his memory to reach the tail of the ship. He draws a map on the wall and decides to follow it. Good thing Katai didn't grow up relying on Google Maps or he'd be screwed. The next morning he continues the journey but is troubled by the same bird, following him everywhere. At midday he has a hard time breathing, so he takes his last vial of oxygen. Then to reach the tail sooner, he builds a raft from logs and continues his journey. After some time Katai falls asleep and dreams of his sister telling him he is close to the destination. He wakes up right before the temperature fluctuation starts and goes around looking for a hot spot. However without Cypher's help he is unable to find one. The temperature drops extremely low and everything around him freezes. Soon Katai drops unconscious on the ground and we see something drag him to a warm safe corner. Katai wakes up the following morning, to see that the bird has saved his life, it had covered him with leaves and twigs treating him as his chicks. Katai thanks the bird but notices it is already dead more trauma for Katai. However with no time to waste, he moves forward and finally finds the tail of the ship. He finds a vial of liquid oxygen and quickly takes it, which rejuvenates him to some extent. Then he sees that the Ursa is missing from where it is supposed to be. Katai gets the beacon and contacts Cypher using the panel in the tail. Cypher who is only somewhat conscious and probably high again, is delighted to see his son alive. However Katai cannot hear him because of some technical issue, Katai then tries using the beacon but it doesn't work due to atmospheric interference. Cypher asks him to try from a different location, but since Katai cannot hear him he only gets more frustrated. But after a while Katai sees a volcano nearby and decides to try using the beacon from the top of it. However trouble soon follows when the lost Ursa tracks Katai and senses his fear, Cypher sees this from the monitor and is worried for him. Katai on the other hand finds out that the creature is following him and starts to run. The Ursa attacks Katai but he manages to save himself after jumping into a body of water, and going up the mountain. Just then the temperature starts to lower, which freezes Katai making him fall to the ground. At the same time Cypher also falls unconscious because of his injuries. The Ursa approaches Katai, as he thinks of his father's words. He remembers that fear is not real and it's all only in his head and he goes full Chad mode. Just then the creature walks right past Katai, unable to detect him. He has removed fear from his mind, and is now able to ghost the creature, just like my Tinder dates ghost me. What was I supposed to do? Using his newfound courage, Katai kills the creature, easily. He then uses the beacon to send signals to their rescue team. In the next scene Katai is on a rescue ship, he walks forward as everyone watches him in appreciation. Cypher lies on a bed being treated for his injuries. After seeing his son, he makes the rangers stand him up and salutes Katai in a true ranger fashion. The movie ends after the father and the son hug. And the ship takes off for Nova Prime.